Jeremy, honey, do you have any idea when you'll be returning home? Your father doesn't appear to be well. We've taken him to the hospital. Do you think you'll be able to make a visit? Oh, is it finally the moment to bid farewell to the old man? It's time. I've been waiting for this for years. That's not good at all. Why would you say something like that? This isn't the time for jokes. Dear, we need you here. Can you come? Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm quite busy. Maybe if I feel like it. If you feel like it? What are you saying? Your father might be in critical condition. It could be life-threatening. I said I'm busy. You can be so persistent sometimes. Oh, by the way, if any other relatives come to visit, make sure to tell them that I'm late due to work. I can't have you telling stories and ruining my reputation. Make sure they still think I'm a great guy. All right, I will. But honey, I'm certain your dad would be delighted to see you. Your visit might be just what he needs to recover. We'll be waiting. Please come as soon as you can. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I thought taking care of the house was your responsibility. And now you're bothering me with all these things I really don't care about. You should really do better. Aren't you supposed to be my wife? All right, I'll try my best. But please promise me you'll come and visit when you have the time. Are you at home? Yes, I am. Is something the matter? I thought you had taken the day off from work. It's clear you've been extremely busy with your job lately. You left in the middle of a funeral without even saying goodbye. I should probably let you know that I've quit my job. What? Why would you do such a thing? Haven't you heard? Dad left behind a substantial fortune. I didn't know about it until now, so there's no chance you knew. There's almost five million dollars in his bank account. Really? But I still don't understand why you would quit your job just like that. It doesn't make sense. Can't you see it? A poor girl like you won't ever understand. You can be so ignorant sometimes. Jeremy, I may not have inherited a fortune, but that doesn't mean I can't comprehend your decision. Money isn't the sole measure of happiness or success in life. You don't get it, Kayla. This is a game changer. With this money, I can finally live the life I've always dreamed of. No more long hours at the office, no more stress, and no more compromises. I can travel the world, start my own business, and truly enjoy the fruits of my labor. And Kayla, use your brain for once. Who needs to work when they have five million bucks? I understand that having financial security can provide opportunities, but I worry that you're dismissing the value of hard work and personal fulfillment. Remember, our father works tirelessly to build his wealth, and he also valued the importance of family and relationships. Money can bring temporary happiness, but it's the meaningful connections and personal growth that bring lasting fulfillment. You're so idealistic, Kayla. I've spent years struggling to make ends meet, constantly worrying about bills and debts. This fortune is my ticket to freedom and a life without limitations. I deserve to finally enjoy the luxuries I've always desired. I don't see where this is going. I just want you to consider the potential consequences of abandoning everything you've worked for. Success is more than just financial wealth. It's about finding purpose, making a positive impact, and maintaining healthy relationships. While money can open doors, it can't guarantee genuine happiness or fulfillment. Well, I do. I suppose I'm different from ignorant people like you who have nothing. You're pitiful. You just can't comprehend the mindset of a millionaire like me. That's why I detested living with you. Fortunately, we can finally put an end to it. Sorry, I'm not quite following. What do you mean by put an end to it? You can leave now. Get out of the house. Leave the house? Does that mean... Wow, you can actually understand something. Yes, it means I'm kicking you out. I don't need you anymore. I am about to be able to get whatever I want with this money. I have no need for you. Wait, are you serious about kicking me out? Yes. Can't you read? It's practically guaranteed that I'll inherit Dad's fortune. I'm the eldest in the family, and I took care of him in his final years. That leaves a good impression when it comes to dividing his assets. But you didn't take care of him. I was the one who took care of your dad all these years. So what? You're not his actual family, just my wife. If you took care of my dad, then good. It means I trained you well. 
It also means my brother will have fewer chances of getting anything. I doubt he'd be getting anything. So from now on, I'll live a happy life with dad's five million. But what you're basically telling me is that as soon as you thought that you were going to inherit the five million, you decided to kick me out. Is that correct? Yes, that's what I've been telling you for the past couple of hours. Anyway, now that you finally understand why I don't need you anymore, it's time to arrange our divorce. And no, don't worry about the costs. I'll cover all the fees. I'll even give you an extra 50000 if you leave promptly. Really? You're willing to do that for me? I have money to spare, unlike you. But once you accept the money, that'll be the end of it. We won't have any further conversations, okay? Can I ask a few more questions? You seem eager. Have you been planning this divorce for a while? But we didn't really have time to have a child. I was busy taking care of your dad. And you were rarely home. Enough with the excuses. Just get out of the house, will you? You'll have to leave eventually because I'm going to sell it. Sell it? Why? It holds so many precious memories with your dad. Probably more than I have. Don't you want to keep it? I'm preparing to buy a new house. And I need the proceeds from selling this one to help with the mortgage. I'm offering you $50,000. So stop complaining. It might be a significant sum for someone like you, but consider it as compensation for me cheating. I knew that you were really deceiving me the whole time. So I assume you'll be moving in with the woman you cheated on me with. Feeling jealous now? It doesn't matter. You'll be out of the house and you won't have anything to do with me for the rest of your miserable life. It's only been five days since your dad passed away and you're already planning to sell the house. I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt, but it's clear you don't care about your father. You're talking too much. I no longer consider you my wife. You have no say in anything. I suppose you want me to thank you for taking care of dad, but that was the one and only useful thing you did. Now that it's over, I have no reason to keep you. The five million is practically already mine. Just be smart for once. Take the $50,000 and leave. All right, then I agree to the divorce. That took you long enough. I want you to pack your things and be out of the house by the end of the day. Is that clear? Yes, I understand. Then fine. I'll prepare the documents and send them to you. Or maybe I'll leave them on the kitchen table when I leave. When will you transfer the 50000 to my bank account? The sooner the better. My current savings should be just enough. I can't wait until I receive the inheritance. $50,000 is nothing compared to $5 million. Then please transfer the money today. I'll accept it as compensation for you cheating on me. Thank you for taking care of me, even though there really isn't much to thank you for. What on earth is happening, Kayla? What? I thought we agreed to not contact each other after the divorce. I still haven't received my inheritance. Have you heard anything from the attorneys? You better not hide anything from me. So that's the reason you reached out to me? I don't think you'll be getting anything, Jeremy. What does that mean exactly? I don't think you'll receive a single penny. I don't understand. Where is my five million? I've been waiting for it. Frankly, I can't fathom how you believed you were entitled to anything. I'm the eldest in the family now that Dad is gone. I should be the one inheriting his entire fortune. Dad left a will. Did you know? Obviously not. Otherwise, I wouldn't be asking you what's going on. After the funeral, a court-appointed executor paid his respects. Apparently, he was named by your dad before he passed, and he was responsible for carrying out his wishes. We scheduled a meeting to discuss the contents of the will. Don't fret, it's all been settled. Why was I kept in the dark about this? Well, you barely attended the funeral. You left early, remember? We assumed there wouldn't be much of an issue without you so we didn't bother informing you. What the hell? According to the will, your dad decided to bestow his entire fortune upon me. It was very kind of him. I don't have time for this nonsense. Just tell me the truth. If you don't believe me, then why don't you ask your brother? He should be well informed since he was chosen to take over the family business. Are you joking? I suppose it doesn't concern you much since you never excelled at work in general, if I recall correctly. 
That's why your dad told you to work at a different company, right? Anyway, your brother inherited your dad's company, and I inherited his fortune. You? You inherited that five million? There must be a mistake. No mistake. I was the sole caregiver for your dad during his retirement years. It wasn't easy, especially since you prevented me from hiring help. The least you could have done was lend a hand, but you never bothered. Your dad remained silent, but he harbored resentment towards you for never lifting a finger or showing any concern. Why didn't he say anything? Why should he have to? You're his son. By the way, he also knew about the fact that you cheated on me. I assume that's why he chose not to leave you anything. The lawyer mentioned a fortune of five million, didn't he? Yes, that's correct. However, none of that money is coming your way. I'm just guessing here, but I'm pretty sure the lawyer never mentioned anything about you being the beneficiary. Our divorce is finalized, and we have no reason to stay connected. I have no intention of associating with you anymore. Don't you dare talk to me like that, you pathetic woman. Why do you get to keep all the money? You're not even related to my dad. You hardly knew him. I should be the one receiving the five million, not you. If I barely knew him, why would I have taken care of him all these years? I wouldn't have done something like that if I didn't know him, right? The reality is, I knew him much better than you did, especially in his final years. It's time for you to face the facts. You're a horrible person, and this is the consequence of your actions. Fine. Whatever. I guess you knew him. But that's not what we're discussing right now. Stop going off topic. Really? I believe it's entirely relevant. You're the one who started the conversation about what happened to the money, right? I'm just trying to be considerate and explain how your father, out of his kindness, decided to leave me his fortune. And I'm explaining why you won't receive a share from such a kind-hearted man. I don't see why you're having trouble understanding. He's still my father, though. Oh, now you suddenly care about him. I distinctly remember you didn't bother showing up when I called you from the hospital. The only thing you did was attend the funeral. And even then, you left early without paying your respects. It's clear you didn't even attempt to show grief. It's sad to think that you only saw your father as a source of wealth. That's not true. I don't know, but that's the impression most of your relatives, your father, and I had based on your behavior. But I suppose it doesn't really matter now. Regardless of the truth, just remember that you won't receive anything from him. Whatever you decide to do from now on, it's none of my concern. We're divorced, so do as you please where I can't see you. I'll make sure you regret your arrogance. And what about the $50,000 I paid you? What about that? We already discussed that. It's compensation. Compensation? What do you mean? It was your suggestion. Compensation for your infidelity. If you have any further issues, please address them with my lawyers. I have no interest in listening to your complaints all day. I have nothing more to say to you. But, but my money. Where is my money? Perhaps you should reflect on your behavior. You were so consumed with work that you rarely came home. You hardly contributed to taking care of the house, let alone your father. Even when you were home, you spent your days lounging on the couch, watching TV like a sloth. Frankly, I think both your dad and I had enough. We expected more from you, and I'm sorry it had to come to this. It's not my fault I was busy. Are you implying I'm not allowed to take a day off and relax? No, that's not what I'm trying to say. But were you genuinely busy? Are you certain you weren't out with the person you were cheating on me with? Considering your lack of dedication to work, I doubt you had any important responsibilities at the company. It's not just your work ethic that's an issue, it's also your values. If you think divorcing me the moment you were about to receive $5 million was a wise decision, then I have no words for you. It's not like that. I had my own problems too. I was under a lot of stress. I'm simply not the kind of person who shows or discusses it openly. Come on, there must be some goodness in you. Share the inheritance with me. Don't you think it's unfair to keep all that money to yourself? I never realized you were so greedy. What problems did you have? Care to explain? No matter how many times I asked, you hardly contributed any money towards the house. When I faced difficulties, you were having fun with your secret lover. It's not fair to me at all, you know? And it's even more unreasonable that after all your stupid actions, you still want me to share my fortune with you? Don't think you can deceive me again. 
There's no point in continuing this conversation, is there? I've already moved out of our old house, just as you requested. If you want to sell it and buy a new one, go ahead. I don't care. Just don't think you'll be getting much out of it, Jeremy. But I invested a million bucks in the new house. I already have a mortgage. I plan to pay it off with the inheritance. Now what am I supposed to do? I'm broke! I don't know, but don't ask me. It's not my problem. You were the one who offered 50000 I simply accepted it. But, but things weren't supposed to turn out this way. You have no one to blame but yourself for all of this. I think it's time you face the harsh reality, Jeremy. I'm sorry, dear. I apologize for my actions. Please forgive me. Give me my share of the inheritance, will you? Your father didn't leave you anything, remember? A portion of zero is still zero. You're not receiving anything. I want nothing more to do with you. Everything your father left behind is now in my hands. I understand that I made mistakes, Kayla. But can't we find a way to move forward? I know I messed up, but I'm willing to make amends and change for the better. It's not just about your mistakes, Jeremy. It's about the years of disregard for our relationship and the pain you caused. It's about the sacrifices I made while you were too busy chasing after your own desires. Your apologies are empty words without genuine actions to back them up. I know I can't undo the past, but I'm willing to learn from my mistakes and work on rebuilding our relationship. We've been through so much together, and I still love you, Kayla. Love me? How ridiculous. You may say you love me, but your actions have proven otherwise time and time again. It's not just about the inheritance. It's about the years of emotional neglect and the disregard for our partnership. I understand that I hurt you, Kayla. And I'm truly sorry for that. I want to make things right and show you that I've changed. But we can address the issues that led us to this point and work on rebuilding our trust. Please, Kayla, don't shut me out completely. I know I messed up, but I still believe in us. Let's at least try to find common ground and work towards healing and understanding. It's over. Right now, I need to prioritize my own well-being and find happiness on my own terms. I hope you have fun with your job and your new girlfriend. But I don't have a job anymore. I don't have a job and I have a mortgage to pay. Your ex-husband is going through a tough time right now. Shouldn't you fulfill your duties as a former wife and help me out? I'm not your wife anymore, honey. Did you forget? We got divorced. Please, help me. Even though we're no longer married, we spent years together. We used to love each other deeply. But did we really? If we did, it was a long time ago. The past few years have been incredibly challenging for me. I dedicated a significant part of my life to taking care of your dad. There are numerous things I missed out on, and I believe he recognized that too. I'm making up for lost time now. I'm sure he would want me to spread my wings. I understand that you feel like you missed out on things, but that doesn't erase the love we once had, right? Remember the time I always cared for you? And we also had our memories together. Jeremy, caring about someone and being in love are two different things. Yes, we shared a history, but that doesn't mean we should continue a relationship that isn't fulfilling for either of us. Life is too short to remain in a stagnant or unhappy situation. I can't imagine my life without you, Kayla. We've been through ups and downs, and I always thought we would find a way to make it work. I know it's difficult to accept, but sometimes relationships run their course. We both deserve to find happiness and fulfillment, even if it means going our separate ways. I'm nearly 40 now, but it looks like life will finally become better. I've spent years putting others before myself, and now it's time for me to prioritize my own well-being and personal growth. I'm sorry to say that I can't say the same for you, Jeremy. Don't give up on us so easily, Kayla. We can work through this. Could we please find a way to reconnect? No. Can't you just stop irritating me? Listen here. It's important to acknowledge that people change and evolve. The person I am today is not the same person I was when we fell in love. I've grown and my priorities have shifted. It's time for both of us to embrace new chapters in our lives and discover what truly makes us happy. Goodbye, Jeremy. I hope we can find peace and happiness separately. After what happened between Jeremy and me, I made the decision to block him, ensuring that I wouldn't receive any messages or calls from him. 
It was a necessary step to protect myself from any further emotional turmoil. Interestingly, I recently heard from a close friend that Jeremy had been persistently seeking lawyers in an attempt to contest his exclusion from the inheritance. However, all of his efforts were in vain, as every legal professional he approached confirmed that he would not be entitled to any portion of the estate. It was at that moment, when faced with a unanimous verdict of legal experts, that Jeremy finally came to the stark realization that there was nothing more he could do to alter the situation. The consequences of his actions had caught up with him, leaving him not only emotionally shattered, but also financially devastated. Deep in debt and with his bank account drained, he had no choice but to accept the harsh reality before him. To make matters worse, as soon as his girlfriend discovered that Jeremy would not be receiving any inheritance, she promptly abandoned him, leaving him to face the consequences alone. Their plans for a new house, which were built on the expectation of financial security, crumbled away, leaving Jeremy in a state of despair and uncertainty. In a desperate attempt to seek assistance, Jeremy turned to me and other relatives, pleading for help and support. However, his pleas fell on deaf ears as all of us, having witnessed the pain he had caused and the consequences of his actions, refused to extend a helping hand. With no alternative left, Jeremy found himself in the position of having to find a new job. Unfortunately, his search proved to be a challenging one, as he struggled to secure a full-time or even a decent part-time position. Eventually, he was left with no choice but to accept a job at a factory located in another state, where the working conditions were nothing short of abysmal. Day and night, he toiled tirelessly, with minimal rest, simply to make ends meet. On the contrary, I used the property inherited from my dad to establish a thriving business. With hard work, determination, and a stroke of good fortune, my venture flourished over the years. And as fate would have it, I crossed paths with a kind-hearted gentleman whom I eventually married. Moreover, I also spent an amount of money on charity and volunteering. These voluntary activities really helped me to find peace in my heart so that I can begin a new chapter of my happy life. In essence, my goal in life is to find true happiness and make the most of the opportunities that come my way. While Jeremy's actions and choices led him down a difficult path, I choose to forge ahead learning and growing from my experiences, and honoring the blessings that have come my way.